Several years ago, I went with a group of Irish people on pilgrimage to the Holy Land, visiting the various historical sites associated with both the Old and New Testament, leaves the pilgrim with a sort of visual canvas, which for years after provides a background of sorts whenever he or she reads or hears the scriptures. On one of the days of the pilgrimage, we made a bus journey through a valley with steep hills rising either side of the road. Because it was the end of the summer, those hills looked quite barren and dry. Looking out the bus window, far up the hillside, I saw a young shepherd walking with great determination uphill and following behind him was a large flock of sheep. Being Irish, I couldn't but marvel at the sight because my experience of trying to get sheep from one place to another was quite the opposite of what I was witnessing with this shepherd. Ireland is very green. It has lots of greens, fields with lush grass, and I suppose for a sheep, one field looks as good as another. So in order to get Irish sheep from one field to the next, you need well-trained sheep dogs who help the farmer coax and cajole and drive the sheep to where you want them to go. But here was this shepherd just walking and the sheep take off behind him, following his lead. And I suppose the difference is a matter of having learned to trust. You see, that barren hillside didn't seem to have much grazing ground on it, and I suppose the sheep had learned that if they trusted the shepherd, if they follow him, then he will lead them, as always, to where there is good grazing and water to refresh them in the heat. Irish sheep don't really need the same trust. For virtually all year round, the grass is abundant and is never further away than beneath the sheep's feet. For today's Mass, Psalm 22 is put before us, though most people think of it as Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. These are perhaps the best known words of any of the Psalms and maybe even the entire Bible. And our familiarity with it might mean that we hear it, say it, or pray it, giving little reflection upon what it is we are actually saying. There is a story told of an actor, reputedly it was the actor Richard Burton, who was asked by an old priest to recite Psalm 23 for an audience. He obliged on the condition that the old priest would also recite it. After the actor had finished his rendition, which he delivered with skill, clarity and perfection, and all the craft of his art as an actor, the crowd burst into applause, applause of admiration. Then it was the priest's turn. Without much oratory skills, he prayed the psalm and seemed almost nervous as he spoke. But as he finished, there were tears in the eyes of many. Taken aback, the actor stood up and said, Ladies and gentlemen, I delighted your ears, but this elderly priest has touched your hearts. The difference between us is precisely this. Though I knew the psalm, he knows the shepherd. There is a difference between saying, The Lord is my shepherd, and affirming, The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is the one in whom I trust. I do not follow the voice of other shepherds, because I do not trust them. 
The Lord is my shepherd. Not some other personage, not some other trend, not some worldly power or earthly ruler. No, I do not trust them. I do not follow them. For they lead me astray. They lead me away from where there is life and freedom. The Lord is my shepherd. With him I shall not want. When in John's Gospel Jesus presents himself as the good shepherd, he makes a point of distinguishing himself from other lesser shepherds who would not be willing to lay down their lives for their sheep and whose voices, though calling the sheep to follow them, are not listened to by the flock of the Lord because the flock of the Lord knows the Lord is our shepherd. So the question that this psalm provokes in us, especially in Lent, should be, is the Lord my shepherd? Or have I been following after other shepherds, other voices, other choices, other persons or things which, though they promise me great things, have delivered me distance from God, wounds rather than healing, danger rather than safety, fear rather than peace and stability. For only the Lord, the Good Shepherd, can give a peace that this world does not know and cannot give us. The Lord is my shepherd, he and no other. He guides me along the right path, the path of righteousness, the path that leads to life and goodness and glory. I choose you, Lord. You, Lord, are my shepherd. I want no other shepherd. I need no other. I trust no other. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want.